What's up everyone, my name is Atropolis. I'm an instructor here at 343 Labs in New York and online. We're now gonna see Ableton's new audio processing devices, drum bus and pedal, and we're gonna see how we can implement these awesome new audio effects to further shape our 808 and bring even more drive and power to our sound. The next layer of movement for me I am going to check out drum bus. I'm going to go into my audio effects. It's called drum bus. Don't let that mislead you. Yes, it works amazing on your drum bus for blowing up your drums. You can use this on anything that you want. You can use this on vocals. You can use this on this case. I'm using it on my 808 bass. Don't be scared of it. Don't let the name limit the use of this awesome device. This is kind of like a channel strip in a way. We have two forms of distortion. Um, we got one part drive over here. We have compression. We have another part of distortion. We can determine and control in a way the, the way that compressor is hitting. We can increase the peak, the transient, the pop, we can decrease it. A lot of shaping we can do in the drum bus. This audio effect will almost take effect immediately. That might be all you need, honestly. Just that little bit, but let's get into it. Let's go crazy with it. We got two forms of drive. We got our compressor. Let's solo it real quick. Transient. Want to click more or less? Crunch. We can decide how much of those high frequencies we want. have a little bit of an EQ in here, kind of like a bell that's focused around this frequency. Be careful here. It's already pretty boomy as it is, but let's check it out. Be careful with the boom. Okay, the boom can be really nice on a drum sample. Uh, it can literally pull a nice juicy bass tone out of your kick on a drum sample. This is already a bass, it's already boomy as it is. I'm not saying don't use it, but just be careful. So the drum bus is a really nice tool that we can use. Let's check it out in action real quick. Uh, let's pull this down, let's go over here. Mix wise, let's bring it down. Drum bus, one stop shop for making your bass buzz even more. Awesome tool, very straightforward. Um, don't stress all of these parameters. If you want to learn more about them, you can go in the bottom left over here. It's called your info view. You can highlight over and try to learn a little bit more about these different frequencies or excuse me, different parameters. Not having a solid understanding of these parameters is not going to deter you from making this thing work. This is really just turn it and you're gonna hear it and you're gonna be able to make a decision. Drum bus is awesome. Let's check out Ableton's new effect called pedal, which is also really awesome and easy and straightforward. I could use them both if I wanted to go really nuts with it, but let's hear it by itself. This is a physical modeling audio effect that is designed to emulate guitar and bass pedals. Uh, distortion overall is a really powerful way to make your bass pop. Distortion is a really powerful way to make everything pop. Vocals, synths, leads, uh, basses, drums. Be careful. 
because it can make things pop, you might go overboard with it. If you start distorting everything, distorting everything, you're no longer going to have a plan, you know, perspective. Everything's going to be here. So just be careful with the things you distort. Let's check out the pedal. Three different modes. We can even add more sub. Maybe get something really dirty. Cut the dry wet a little bit. Try these out together. I don't know, it might be too much. I wouldn't rule it out. You can stack things. Just be careful with the mix. Be careful if it's too muddy, too loud, if it's drowning things out. That's how you would make your decision to how much distortion and craziness. If you have a lot of space, if the bass is really the main thing, in the track, you know, typically the ear can really only pick up on three things and focus on three things. I, I would use that as a, as a good guideline for your productions. So if the bass is playing a predominant role, you might have a lot of room for it to get distorted and crazy. But if you have a lot of things happening, you might want to take it back a little bit. So these two audio effects can be really, really awesome tools to use um, to give that bass, that 808, a little bit more forwardness. You will have this to start with. Um, you will also have the preset that I created. Uh, there will be another Ableton file with um, more wavetable presets that I created. I really want you to focus on the parameters that I pointed out and I want you to try the best to just kind of get comfortable and do it on your own than relying on these presets, but you'll have them. So in this preset that I have, Let's record another, let's record another. I'm getting kind of bored of the thing I have in there. Kind of messed up. I want you to check out the wavetable. I did certain things a little bit differently in terms of what I'm having going on in my oscillator too. I have everything mapped in my matrix. We have some different routings. Uh, we have the filter frequency being modulated by the amplitude envelope. I have some movement with my position that could be fun to move around. Things I really want you to try to get going is your matrix and the mappings of these parameters can really give you movement. So my pulse width modulation, um, one thing that will happen, it's a little confusing. Uh, the menus don't necessarily change. For example, in FM, this is now that what was called PW, pulse width is now tone, and you can see when I click on tone, it sometimes the names like don't carry over. Um, it's a little confusing, like before it got stuck on PW, and it wasn't changing, now it's saying it's oscillator two effect one. So sometimes these labels don't really translate as clear as you hope they are, but you will notice that when you click on them, um, you might see different labels, but basically, the moment you click on it, you'll see it light up in the white, and I'm routing my envelope to it. You can automate the pitch move, uh, the oscillator position. I can also, as, as you can see, I can also say, hey, oscillator position, I want you to go to, let's say, envelope three. So a lot of fun. In terms of tonality, if you're trying to add some more harmonics to your 808, 
hang out in your oscillator to play with the different wavetables and make sure you're playing with these different effects. And most importantly, make sure you're taking these different parameters of these different effects. There's only two, and you're trying to map it to your envelopes, amp, envelope two, envelope three to get that movement. That is Wavetable in a nutshell. This would be a really powerful way to start building your own custom 808 drum samples. Thank you for watching. I hope that helps. Please do not hesitate to hit us up at 343 Labs if you have any questions. Make sure to download the two templates. You'll have this project and another one with some presets that you can mess with. Thanks for hanging out with us. 343 Labs is an electronic music school and community in downtown Manhattan. We offer courses for all levels of learning electronic music production, with course topics including Ableton Live, Logic, Synthesis for Music Producers, Songwriting and Music Theory, and more. To learn more about 343 Labs, head to 343labs.com. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more tutorials with our instructors, master classes, and content from our electronic music community.